Louisiana State University. You've got the likes of Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham. Is DJ Chark the next one in line? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Brendan Albert is here. I am Adrian FedQ. DJ Chark, deep threat ability. Let's get into it. Absolutely. LSU has a track record of being able to put some pretty good receivers in the NFL. They also have a track record of not letting those guys live to their potential in college due to pretty bad quarterback play during their time in college. First thing we're going to look at, beautiful catch, outstretch, over the shoulder. This is a great job by Chark. Big time. Awesome ability here to get down the field and be able to track the ball. You're going to see every bit of that 4-3-4 speed that he ran in the combine with that sub, you know, that 6-3 six, six, he came into, yeah, and measured in at. 4-3-4, foot three. awesome ability here tracking the football over his shoulder. He's truly a vertical threat. Yeah, wish we had the all-22 to see exactly what he's doing, but you can see what he's doing at the end there, and that's just a beautiful catch. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so next thing, we're, we're going to look at a slot fade. This is something that the uh, Tigers ran a lot in the bayou, and nice catch here as well. Absolutely. This is going to be a really nice job here by DJ. He's going to know, hey, that ball is going to be about three yards closer to the sideline than I'm going to be. However, I'm going to press vertical as long, as long as I can. Run, 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 and then it calls run stab. So he's going to run vertical as hard as he can, and then as soon as the ball is really close, he's going to take a hard step with his right foot and essentially push himself back to create separation so that he can get the ball. This is a really good job of making sure this defensive back, who's in a trail technique and is keeping his eyes on DJ Shark's eyes, has no idea that the ball actually is about three yards more outside. But because DJ Shark stays so vertical till the very last second, this defensive back has zero chance of the ability to break this play up. Yeah, and, and if you guys watched our film study on Michael Gallup, uh, we talked about that being one of his weaknesses, you know, going too much to the sideline. Not a problem with Shark. No, Michael Gallup likes to drift into the ball a little too early, something you can certainly teach. Yeah, don't get me wrong. But DJ Shark's ability to wait till the last second to attack the ball is a huge thing for quarterbacks. That's what makes quarterbacks more confident that they will be able to get that 50-50 situation. All right, so you talked about that speed. That speed allows him to get yards after the catch. And we see an example of that here. Absolutely. Now, this is some pretty shitty angles here by Syracuse, but his stop-start yeah. ability is very, very noticeable in that clip there. Yeah, he's got, some, he's got some quickness to him. And this is, like, this is a, an example here of where I, if you really wanted to compare the LSU comparison, I would buy the ability to compare him to Odell Beckham and his ability of the stop-start here and being a really long strider, similar to how Odell is. It's very similar right there in that clip. So we see the quickness here, and the next thing we're going to see is quickness at the line of scrimmage to get the immediate inside position on the quick slant. Absolutely. You know, you're not always going to win. In a perfect case scenario as a receiver, you're going to be able to win with your footwork, but that's not always the case. So what we're going to see here is some pretty good footwork, but you see here A&M's in a pretty good position there in his, in his spot. So what DJ does, he kind of throws that left hand out pretty quick before you can see it right there. He gets his left hand on the defensive back before the defensive back gets his hand on him. This allows DJ the ability to have a clear inside release, and this is pitch and catch here for an easy touchdown for LSU. Yeah, he set that route up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, great job here. Another knock that I had on Michael Gallup, I don't think he was dynamic enough off the line of scrimmage here. DJ Shark does a nice job showing his ability to try to win with his feet if it doesn't happen, and that happens. It's fine. His ability to counterpunch with his hand, and that's what ultimately gives him the inside release here. There you go. All right, so some pluses to his game, some other things that he can do, some gadget-type things. He's a guy that will take a handoff, so if you want to run a jet sweep, he can do that, a reverse, and that's due to his speed, due to his shiftiness. Absolutely. I mean, look, when you got a guy who runs a 4-3-4, sometimes it's like, hey, let's not overthink this. Let's get the guy's ability in space. Yeah, he makes one guy miss here, and this is a nice little dead leg. Boop! Dead leg, and now it's just his speed here. Gets great blocks by his teammates, but is able to take this win to the house standing up, no problem, because of his ability to run. Yeah, there were several examples on tape where, where you see him run the jet sweep. He always turns the corner, makes that initial defender miss, and some good blocking, as you said here, that sprung him free for the score. Big time. The other added bonus, punt returning. And he takes this one to the house. Big time, man. I mean, again – you don't really see a lot of defensive back, or excuse me, 
take that back. You don't see a lot of return men who are six foot three. That's pretty rare, usually because they don't have the lateral ability. What you guys want to watch here, obviously his ability to run, but his ability to run backwards and still have the angle on everyone, that really shows you his vertical ability. This is a nice little bonus you see here from receivers, defensive backs. You know, one of the questions is, hey, we obviously know he could be a starter on our offense, but can he help us on special teams? And DJ definitely can. So we saw the quick slant and his ability to win off the line of scrimmage, but sometimes he gets lazy with his route running, and that's what we're going to look at right now after he crosses the goal line here. Yeah, this is a very bad drifting situation. As you can kind of see here, it kind of pops straight up and he gets to the top of his route here. And it's not really pretty because what happens is this is going to delay a little bit of a stop start. Now, he's a very good athlete, but his route running, I will say this, it lacks a lot of, a lot of desire. He just stands straight up here. It's not a good look. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not coming back to the ball. You're literally going backwards into the defender. In the NFL, this is a PBU. Absolutely. You know, this is one of those things where, yes, do you want to come back for the ball on a curl? Absolutely. But you don't want to be standing straight up at the top of your route because the next thing that's going to have to happen is you're going to have to sink back down way too high in this. And this is a thing that he's not great at. His underneath route very much lacks something for desired. I mean, look here. He's literally drifting two yards backward. He's here at the 15 and he catches it at like the 13. Yep. All right. Next thing out route this is just lazy uh, that's the best way to describe it yeah I mean look this this just looks like he is going through emotions doesn't really care it just is so rounded it's so flat I don't know man this is one of those things where again underneath ability it's not something I'm really confident on DJ yeah and, and this is in the final minute of a, of a bowl game this is the citrus bowl this is Notre Dame LSU and this is exactly. just awful. And this is a one-score game in the bottom of the, you know, the fourth quarter when you're yeah. driving. I don't know. It just, it just felt like sometimes when I watch film of DJ, it felt like if the ball wasn't called vertical, he kind of went through the motions. Man, he's not even going after that at all. Mm -hmm. All right, last thing we're going to see. Lack of fight on this wheel route, uh, what, what don't you like about this? So lack of fighting is something that's concerning for me because it's all well and good if you're the fastest guy in the room, but eventually you're not always going to be the fastest guy in the room. So you got to attack the ball. This is something here that he just was like, ah, it's overthrown. I'm good. I think he probably could have elevated and attacked this a little bit better. Maybe I'm being a little hard on him, and maybe this is not something that's always the same but if you're the fastest guy, you also have to be a really physical receiver in the NFL in order for you to be a true number one. Otherwise, you're a guy like Mike Wallace or Torrey Smith. Yeah, so we're going to look at it just in, in slow-mo here. So you, you see the defensive back here. He rides the hip, the chart. This is really, really good coverage. And instead of fighting for it, like you said, stopping, playing the feet, going up and high-pointing, he just kind of lets it go. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things I kind of looked at and I was like, eh. Now, here's the thing, okay? As I'm knocking that, he also wore number seven. Now, number seven at LSU is a big tradition there. This is a jersey that's passed down from year to year by teammates who have gone on and said, hey, we think you earned this. Last year before this, Leonard Fournette. Years before that, Patrick Peterson. Those guys are straight-up dudes in the NFL. So yep. I am knocking, you know, that last clip there of DJ Shark saying, man, how much do you really want this? Are you really a competitor? If he's getting the number seven, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and say he probably is. He probably does have that edge to him, and probably this is just a bad clip of him. Where do you think he goes? His, he is, like Method Man said, R-E-W. He is so freaking raw. His high-end ability is unbelievable. Six foot three, four three, four forty. There's not a lot of guys walking planet Earth that has that ability. So he could go as early as the 20s. And I could say, I see it. I certainly see his ability. He could also go in the 40s. I think a 20 to 40 range is realistic. We talked about it when we, we just finished our last show of Sutton. I think he would be a fantastic fit in Philadelphia because he would do exact opposite of what Alshon does. He's such a vertical threat, and he's not necessarily the bigger possession type receiver that Alshon is. I think he'd be a really nice fit there in Philadelphia at 32. But I also could see him going somewhere before 40 in the second round. 
All right. That's DJ Shark. That's also Brendan Albert. I am Adrian. Thank you. Take care. Appreciate it, guys.